Hello fellow aviators, my name is Matt Farrell and I'm the Flying Salesman. Got a really neat treat for you guys today. One of the things, as you know, is I like to show you, the viewers, and my fellow aviators more about the aviation community and more importantly in this episode we're going to talk about how to become a professional aviator. I've had the opportunity to meet Miss Rebecca Parker from Delta State University and she was gracious enough to agree to let me come to Delta State and highlight her program and some of the things they're doing here at Delta State. Rebecca it's great to be here today. Thank you for coming. Rachel, y'all met Rachel in the last video. She's a prospective student. She's graduating senior this year, and she came to Delta State with me to view their program and get a glimpse into the commercial aviation program they have here at Delta State. So Rebecca, you're a graduate of this program, is that correct? Yes, so I'm BSU alumni in 2012. I don't know if I should share that information or not, <laughs> but I did come here as a student. Uh, I had no idea anything about getting a degree in commercial aviation, but I always knew I wanted to apply. My mother said, okay, well, you're still going to college. And so we searched around Mississippi. We're the only four-year university that you can get all of your licenses and a bachelor's degree in commercial aviation. Rebecca, after you graduated, one of the things that I found really interesting is you went on to become a corporate pilot. Is that correct? That's right. So I graduated from Delta State, and then I went down to South Alabama and flight instructed with IFS with the Navy. Uh, it's introductory flight screening, which took them from zero hours to their solo in about 15 hours. During that time, I met a friend and he got me into corporate flying, so I flew private jets for about five years. So one of the neat things that you were able to do is you got all your flight instructor certificates, you did flight instructing, you flew in the corporate world, and then you were able to bring that experience back here to Delta State and share that with your students, isn't that correct? That's right. So during my time uh, with corporate aviation, 135 on-demand charter, I actually did my master's degree with Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. I did it online, and actually I did homework all over the United States, and sometimes in the Bahamas, um, <laughs> which is pretty wild, but I reached out to a friend of mine who was the chair here at the time, and he asked if I was interested in a teaching position, so I was able to bring all that experience here to Delta State, and I've been here for six years. Rebecca, one of the things that uh, I found really interesting during our time that when we first met and the conversation we had is you have a strong passion not only for introducing aviation to any incoming student, but for women in aviation. Yeah. So share that with us and tell the viewers about what that's, what that's like and what it means to you. I'm very involved with Women in Aviation International. I'm our faculty advisor for our Magnolia chapter, our local chapter here. I started it, put it together, and had an excellent group and have had excellent officers and a good team um, here with my students that fulfill the positions of president, vice president, and so on. So I like to introduce my students, you know, to other worlds other than just basic airlines or management. I want them to go and see uh, what else is out there. This coming September, uh, we'll host our aviation career fair. It'll be our third annual career fair. And through that, we have sponsorships through the companies that come here. It's 100% voluntary. We don't have any fees for it. And through those sponsorships, it helps pay for the career fair. And then it also helps sponsor uh, some of our students who go to the Women in Aviation Conference. Uh, for the past two years, I was able to bring two students at the time. And then this past year, 2024, we actually brought seven students with us to the Women in Aviation Conference in Orlando, Ooh, Florida. Awesome. Had a really big networking opportunity. They met so many different genres in aviation. It's not just flying. It's not just a manager position. There's so much out there and anything and everything aviation is there. I like to donate my time and my experience and all it takes is a little bit of effort, a little bit of time, a little bit of money, of course. You know, hopefully we've had really good sponsors that have been involved with Delta State and in our women in aviation program. So Outstanding. And I, I certainly uh, would not doubt that you're if qualified if not overly qualified for this position so uh, just in the short period of time that I've gotten to know you a little bit better I am just blown away by the experience that you have and what you bring and the, what you're able to give back to the students during my time when I was going through um, and got my degree you know uh, we didn't have professors that had the level and the, 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 the knowledge that you bring to the table. And so I really see that as being an asset to the school and to the program you have here. I've got to actually do some work. I'm gonna step away. I'm gonna let you and Rachel visit a little bit. Um, you know, everybody knows I'm the flying salesman, so I've actually got some sales calls I'm gonna make, but I'm gonna leave y'all with the cameras, let y'all chat a little bit, 
and then I'll come back and check with y'all in a little while. So uh, it's really nice visiting with yes, you. Take you. good care of Rachel. Uh, I think <laughs> we've ignited a small flame of aviation for and I'm really expecting you to fan those flames and make it look right. I'm going to bring her into the simulator here in just a few minutes. We're going to go fly the diamond simulator. That was the plane that you actually pre-flighted on the ramp earlier with my oh, students, wow. uh, Abby and Sealy. And so it's actually the building behind us. It's a building in a building. It's wild. Um, but we have a simulator that we use for flight training here whenever we're working on multi-engine licenses for our students. Cool. Well, you guys chat about that. Like I said, I've got some work I've got to do. I've actually got to sell some parts for Aramok and uh, I'll be back. Wait, so take me through like the typical coursework at Delta State. So you still have your basic college classes, your general eds, English, math, things like that. But we also have the aviation courses. You have to have 60 hours of aviation courses, our CAV courses. We have uh, the associated grounds to the flight. So we have private pilot flight, private pilot ground, instrument ground, instrument flight, and so on. We have aerodynamics, air traffic administration. So you cover the basics of a little bit of everything. It's a four-year degree. It's in Cleveland, Mississippi. One of the fantastic things is that you don't have to be a Mississippi resident to actually get our tuition as well. We don't have any out-of-state extra fees associated with it. Right now, the tuition for the entire four years, if you come in with zero credit hours, is about 65000 So it is a, a pretty good competitive pricing for a four-year degree for a bachelor's of commercial aviation and majoring in flight operations. But you do also have the extra fees on flying as well. I call it a pay-to-play is the best way that I can explain it. You have to have the money in the flight account to pay for your next flying. You don't have to have all the money up front, but you do have to have it as you go along. That's awesome. So I was looking through yeah. the brochure and everything. and said there's over like a hundred different like aviation majors. Like, can you talk to me more about that? Because I didn't even know that this was like kind of a thing. Like, I'm like, oh, sure, I want to be a pilot. It's like, wait, there's more stuff you can do within the aviation field. We do have two degrees, commercial aviation and aviation management, but mm -hmm. you can segue those anywhere that you want to. We have aviation managers across the country that are Delta State alumni, and we have pilots across the, you know, the different regionals and major airlines and FedEx and things like that. But it's not just pilot or manager. You can go out and have an interest in mechanics, uh, marketing. If you want to get into manufacturing, that's also an option as well. It, you can literally take it anywhere that you want to. It's awesome. Through Delta State, about how much do the students actually fly? Great question. So we schedule our students five times a week uh, for two hour flight slots at a time. Um, but that, they're not limited to that. They can come and do two days. They can come and fly on the weekends. And all of those count as credit hours. And again, they uh, are associated with the campus as well because we have the ground courses on campus as well as the flight courses here at the airport. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So mm -hmm. did you just like go over all the different certificates like I can graduate mm -hmm. with? Yes. Like, so oh, you'll graduate cool. with all of those. Uh, typically, graduates are about 250, 300 hours whenever they graduate for their total time. And most of them end up staying here at Delta State and fly and instruct for us and build their hours. But with all those like certificates, like you said most, most people go up to be flight instructors and stuff like that. But yeah. can some just, I mean, they graduate and then like start flying? Yes. Okay. And so most of ours become our flight instructors. They will have a commercial pilot certificate, meaning that they can go and fly for hire. But nowadays, most companies are looking anywhere between 1,000 and 1,500 hours total time with some flight experience uh, to be able to go and work for hire. Um, one of the wonderful things about Delta State University is that we are not only a flight training program, Part 141, but we're also an institution fighter learning. And so we are certified by the FAA saying that we, our graduates uh, can qualify for an RATP, a Restricted Airline Transport Pilot License. Um, it is a relatively new rule that not only the captain, but also the first officer at regional airlines must have an airline transport pilot license, an ATP. And so a segue for that is an RATP, a Restricted Airline Transport Pilot License. And once our students graduate from our program, they'll have this documentation that says that 1,000 hours total time rather than 1,500 hours total time, they can actually go and work for a regional airline or something, you know, corporate or, or uh, maybe some cargo. And so they get there that much faster. That's so awesome. Yeah, very yes. big benefit. From my research with different um, aviation, like education, stuff like that, the main thing I've found is that restrict students, it's just the number of instructors, like aircraft. So how do you all like get over that problem at Delta State? Past few years, maybe even five years, uh, 
most training institutes, especially higher education, do have a wait list. Uh, thankfully, Delta State has a very good ratio of flight instructors to students and then also airplanes to students. We have five brand new Sears. Uh, we have five new aircraft coming in. Um, actually, Thursday, one of them is going to be here, which is very exciting. Oh, wow, yeah. We have three multi-engine trainers. We have Cessna 172s, 152s. And so we have an availability of aircraft and then also flight instructors. We have high quality flight instructors and we do hire outside of Delta State as well. Um, we have several that come from like ATP and things like that, have the benefits of working for a university and we pay pretty mm -hmm. well. So we, we attract some really cool people. That's so awesome. Yeah, well, I've, a question I have as prospective students, I've never had the background of aviation. I haven't been exposed to that very much. Mm -hmm. And you've had a lot of experience teaching. Mm -hmm. um, even like students who are more unexperienced, can they still be successful pilots? Don't let it scare you because the instructors are here, your flight instructors are here for you, your faculty members, you know, your professors are there for you, and they will break down the information. It seems overwhelming at first, but then you catch on, and then you get to go fly airplanes, and then you go get to do your solo, and go on cross countries, and go on solo cross countries, and you just keep building that experience, and it's so much fun. You don't have to have any background. Mm -hmm. I don't have anybody in my family that ever really flew professionally, and so, I have many students that don't have any experience, no flight hours, anything, come here and they're very successful. All right. That's very reassuring to hear yeah. stuff like that. So what would you recommend? Are there any like opportunities that students can have like just to maybe get like a little taste of aviation before they commit to before college? Women in Aviation International is a fantastic organization and then anybody that's under than 18 can be a free Women in Aviation member. Oh wow. Yes, and so that's a fantastic opportunity. Worldwide, they have Girls in Aviation Day, and it's free as well. And so you can easily search this, WAI.org, and actually go and find a local chapter that's hosting one and go and join them. So you get a little bit of experience. The different um, chapters across the globe, not just in the United States, will host different things. They may do a little bit of aerodynamics. They may even um, you know, have some simulators. Um, they'll have introduction to aviation, like STEM projects that are hands-on, exciting things, some drones. And so there are opportunities out there. Civil Air Patrol is another really good one for the younger people to go in and get some taste of aviation. Mm -hmm. um, and there's all kind of different organizations out there. You name it, we got it. Latino Pilots Association, the Black Pilots of America. And so there's different organizations. You just have to go and find your niche. So some of the questions I think uh, future perspective would be kind of like scared about what are because obviously there's a lot of expenses right with the jet fuel and like the tons of equipment um what are like some scholarships like financial aid to help that belt state university does have a great financial aid office and they'll help uh segue that with student loans and things like that but there are so many scholarships out there and available many of the organizations that i named before do have a lot of scholarships I know I've said women in aviation so many times, but on an annual basis, they have over a half a million dollars worth of scholarships that they give out. Wow. So it's, it's a big deal. It's a huge organization. A lot of people are passionate about it. It's not just, you know, women that are a part of it, but men as well that are a support team. And, um, but all you have to do is go out and look for them. Anybody is welcome to email me and shoot me an email. I have a whole PDF full of uh, scholarships that University Aviation Association uh, provides out as well, the UAA. That's great. Well, earlier before you said something about like simulators, stuff like that. Does Delta yes. State have a simulator? We have lots of simulators. Oh, can we check uh, one out? Yeah, absolutely. So this is uh, our simulator back here for the Diamond, the DA-42. Let's go. All right, let's go. And then it's the same plane, so you just put your hands here and then just kind of step down into it. Anytime that you ever approach your airplane, you always want to make sure that magnetos are off because if they're on, the engine can be considered live. After rotation, um, I'll call out a positive rate, meaning that we're climbing upward and we'll visually be able to see it and we'll put the gear up as a safety feature there. So you actually pull it out and then up. Um, flaps are over here, they're electric, and then obviously it's a multi engine plane. Uh, you can see the left engine, right engine, everything's always pilot point of view. Um, we have our throttles. These are the propeller lever levers that Abby had mentioned before. And so that actually changes the pitch of the propeller itself. 
and then this is our mixture. So this goes with our fuel air mixture. And uh, this one's a little different because you have to squeeze it to move it. It's not going to hurt anything right now. All right, right into the clear. And then I want you to hold uh, with your left hand the key and then your right hand on the mixture. I know we don't have uh, sounds right now. Oops, there we go. There we go. Good stuff. Let go of the key and then pull this power back just a little bit.
I've got my business done. I think you guys had a great time in the simulator. Yes. We've got some footage of that. We're going to intersperse that in the video that you're going to get to see. So I've wrapped up my business here. Rebecca, you've been a fantastic host. Thank you, I really think you've done a great job of fanning the flames of aviation <laughs> with Rachel. Well, she's uh, a natural. It was easy working with her in the town. Outstanding. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, it's time for us to jump back in the airplane, Rachel, and okay. head back to Texas. So are you ready to go? Yes, I'm going to miss it though. This is so much, much, so much fun. <laughs> well, fantastic. Thank you for coming. Seriously. Fellow aviators, let me do that again. <laughs> Fellow aviators, thank you for coming along. It's great having you with us. I'm glad we were able to share Rachel's early aviation experiences with you. I hope this fuels your fire to go out and start flying. Y'all take care. Have a good one. Bye, y'all.